The latest Marvel vs. Capcom game, which was seven years ago, was subtitled Infinite, but instead became infamous. The switch back to 2v2 was always going to be questioned by the fans of the faster 3v3 games, but that wasn't the problem. The problem was having such a small roster for a crossover fighter, way smaller than MVC2 or 3, no X-Men at all, and the new characters at launch not even breaking into the double digits. The return of the Infinity Stones were nice, but most players would have preferred to have Assist Fighters return. The story mode rarely lasted more than two play sessions, and it wasn't that good of a story to begin with. The game looked ugly even after they redid the character models. Dragon Ball The Fighters came out at a really inconvenient time, and it had one of the worst marketing and PR campaigns modern-day Capcom has ever seen. Infinite was ironically defined by its limitations. So, naturally, rumors around this game's underwhelming roster were abound, even more so than with Marvel vs. Capcom 3. However, whereas that game had several interviews before and after release, some of which even contradict each other, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite hasn't had any mainstream coverage since its final DLC character. There just isn't anything concrete to go off of here. So, I'll have to take a different approach. This video will be going over the rumored DLC plans that obviously never happened. I'll be ordering the four rumors from least to most plausible, starting with a copium-fueled 4chan post, and ending with a leak that got an update, had a name attached to it, and had some data mined information to back it up. Each part will go over what makes them believable, what makes them hard to believe, and the implications of them being true. If anything, take this as a documentation of the rumors for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite's DLC. Speaking of which, that's part of the reason of why I'm doing this. It's to document the evidence of these rumors while they still exist, since one of them has already been lost to time beyond a single screenshot. But there's also a chance that there's some legitimacy to these. I think back to how Fan 4 Stick and Ghostbusters Answer the Call were accurately spoiled on 4chan back in the day. And then there's the Smash 4 Gamatsu leak. This leak correctly predicted every new addition to the game, with the exception of getting Krom and Chorus Kids wrong. However, Sakurai confirmed that Krom was intended, but replaced, with Robin, and there's a Rhythm Heaven franchise icon referenced in the game's files. Even the vague post in the original leak about a Pokémon from X and Y was accurate, as Sakurai admitted that he had those exact words on the original design document before he settled on Greninja. It's very possible that something leaked but never released was intended but simply got cut or cancelled. Sure, it's not likely, but the odds are not absolute zero, and that's enough for me. That said, I'm positive this first one can't be real. Over in the wacky world of 4chan, this leak is certainly a classic case of fake and lame, even if there's no green text involved. But Anon had some genuinely good storytelling to go with their hypothetical update, so let's indulge a bit. Anon claims that MVCI wasn't going to get any more DLC, but instead get the ultimate treatment MVC3 did. Okay, not an unreasonable idea. But then Anon says it would be called Uncanny Edition. They claim that since Capcom took the brunt of the losses, the game would be largely under their creative control. Right down to the art style and the roster. They then state that Marvel wanted to promote Avengers 4, but Capcom would only do it if they could use the X-Men. They finally stated it would have had a longer development than the original game, and would have too many differences to be a DLC update. Yes, this is stupid! Woo boy, there's a lot to unpack with this one. Now first, I have to give Anon credit for the title. In a game that would apparently have both a change in art style and reintroduce the X-Men, giving it a title that references the original Uncanny X-Men run is brilliant. However, no marketing department would ever sign off on it. Uncanny is just not a word people have a positive association with. And that's the issue this leak has in general. Elements that make sense until you run them through their paces. Changing the art style sounds nice, until you remember that this game was meant to tie into the MCU, visuals included. It seems logical that Capcom would be given more creative control when they took the big hit on this game, but Marvel was a narcissistic and controlling company back in 2011, and Avengers Infinity War would only cement those qualities, not avert them. And why would Marvel seek out an underperformer like this to advertise Endgame, when they had a very successful Fortnite event with Thanos for Infinity War? This leak said it'd be revealed during Q1 of 2019, alongside G and C Viper for Street Fighter V. Please don't laugh. While C Viper never made it to Street Fighter V, 
The Q1 comment with the longer development period comment adds another issue. This leak could have happened no later than July 2018. The screenshot of the original post doesn't give an exact date. But it was mentioned in the July 1st, 2018 Reddit post on a leak further down this list. This would imply, at most, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite had one year of development. I mean, I know this game was rushed and underfunded, but this just doesn't strike me as a game that could have been gotten done in a single year. Like many leaks on 4chan, it seems reasonable on the surface, but breaks apart the more you try to add things together. And then we get to the roster, which is somehow the most believable part of this entire leak, despite it having the largest roster of any leak this video is covering. Luckily, Anon's absolutely accurate roster can easily be cut into three groups. First are the characters from Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Wolverine, Magneto, Doctor Doom, Deadpool, Sentinel, Storm, Shumagorath, Super Scroll, Akuma, Virgil, Wesker, Felisa, Beautiful Joe, and Amaterasu. This category takes up half the hypothetical extra characters. And to be fair, that's not hard to believe. Marvel vs. Capcom 3's Ultimate roster was going to have 20 new characters if it wasn't for the 2011 earthquake tsunami that hit Japan. So if the compromised version could make 12 characters from scratch in a matter of months, a year for 14 characters brought over from MVC3, when most of the base roster on Capcom's side in MVCI was already that, is plausible. The second group would have been characters brought back from MVC2. Gambit, Psylocke, Cable, Juggernaut, Ruby Heart, Amingo, Jill, Jin, and Captain Commando. This one has some eyebrow raisers. The Marvel side is pretty reasonable. Juggernaut is the only one I'd scratch my head at, but he's an OG for this crossover series who was left out of the MVC3 titles. I'm not saying I'd be upset with them, but all five of those are characters who need a lot of additional assets to get working. Ruby and Jill summon other creatures to attack for them, while Amingo and Jin are heavily stylized and need models with a lot of joints and stretchable textures to get working. Captain Commando also has his gank squad, although, to be fair, Dead Rising 3 was able to give him all of his key special moves on his own, and prove that he should absolutely be voiced by Peter Fleming. Thank you for playing this game! Captain Kick! Captain Kick! Captain Collider! Captain Collider! Captain The final group is the newcomers, and naturally it's the smallest group. There's only one on the Marvel side, Doc Ock. And even that's debatable, since he was a cut character from MVC3. As in, had a complete moveset and character theme cut. He was just too visually buggy. Capcom gets three others, Asura, Leon, and Jean. Asura, or Asura, I've heard it pronounced both ways, and whenever I say it one way, I'm told it's the other, has become one of those cult classic Capcom characters, along the likes of Beautiful Joe and Amaterasu. So I think he's an inevitability for one of these crossovers. Leon and Jean were both cut from previous Versus titles. Leon was meant to be in Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, while Jean was considered for Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Interestingly, both characters lost their respective slots to Frank West. Anon claims this was the tip of the iceberg, and offered more information to anyone who asked. However, the thread was not archived beyond a single screen cap of the OP. So who knows if anyone took Anon up on their generous offer. Maybe much stronger evidence was lost and never screenshot. Maybe everyone on 4chan called this bait and moved on. I'm certainly in the latter. Ironically, trying to not have as much of a story for this update would have made it much more believable. A post saying it's getting the ultimate treatment instead of updates and they're bringing back as many characters as possible to pad out the roster would have been a lot more believable than Disney's Marvel's heart grew three sizes that day after Capcom took a loss for them. And even then, it was called Infinite from the get-go for a reason. Capcom executives probably thought the Street Fighter V model would work here while not having to actually fund the game. On to a slightly less ridiculous rumor. This one comes from Reddit, a website I only seem to visit when making one of these videos. It claims to have two anonymous sources, which are two more than the last OP cited. They claim that the second season of DLC would feature 12 characters for $49.99. Ooh boy, that would have angered some people, given that the Ultimate Edition of Marvel vs. Capcom 3 had just as many fighters for a cheaper price, and you did not need the original game. But I digress. 
Most of the information beyond the roster was just when we would see them in action, which obviously never happened. The interesting claim is that this game would have the Street Fighter V ranking system and would be part of the Capcom 2018 Pro Tour, with top contenders in one or the other, it did not do a good job clarifying which one this refers to, getting special costumes for the game. The leaker did not know if they would be just for the top contenders or turned into DLC. What the leaker did claim to know is that four characters had details on their movesets because they had already reached the playtesting stage. First is Akuma, reported to have the fastest speed of any base movement in the game, but the first fighter to have only 8,500 health. He would have his ground slam technique from Street Fighter 3 and 5. Demon Flip could be followed with a command grab, and he would have different special moves depending on if the attack button was tapped or held. Overall, a believable adaptation for Akuma in Infinite. But he wasn't alone, as Gil from Street Fighter 3 was also labeled as playtest ready. Seems weird, but I have a theory as to why, we'll get to that in a later leak. His pyro and cryokinesis would be strictly cosmetic with no extra mechanical effects. His lariat could cause a wall or a ground bounce based on the input the player used, and he would have a nerfed version of his resurrection. He would need four full bars to use it, and would only get 20% health upon resurrection. Although the soul stone would enhance it. Strange that two Street Fighter characters would apparently be ready first. Amaterasu would apparently return, although the claim that she would get additional particle effects when most characters had some effects removed is hard to say. But movement-wise, she would now be able to dash twice per jump, along with said dashes being much faster. And she would be given her cherry bomb from the games. It's described as working like Beautiful Joe's bomb in the previous Versus titles. Although, without the cell shading, this would be the goddess's most cursed appearance since Dead Rising 4. The final of these four playtest-worthy characters was cited as Loki. They claimed that he'd attack with illusions, but it's not clear if this means obstructing the opponent or more along the lines of a Scarecrow from Injustice 2. He's also described as being counter-heavy, with more generic magic attacks to fill out his moveset. One of his supers would buff him and his teammate in a nondescript manner, and his level 3 was said to involve the Frost Giants. The other eight characters are far less detailed. Felicia would be able to air combo off of her rolling uppercut, and would have had her design censored. Captain Commando wouldn't have any new moves, but instead would have variations of his existing ones. Phoenix Wright was cited as having to be overhauled to account for the new button layout. Miss Marvel would apparently reuse elements from the Super Scrolls Mr. Fantastic powers, including the Tenderizer special. Doctor Doom would have a new special, of some kind, it didn't really clarify. And his molecular shield was described as being able to manually move and launch player-sized rocks. Leon S. Kennedy, Daredevil, and Ant-Man were cited, but they didn't have any details given. So, this is definitely more believable than John 4chan's Mega Leak, but I'm still not buying it. Sure, some games have very long seasonal content, but generally, they're meant to be short and snappy to keep players' interest, since the industry is so oversaturated these days. They could, in theory, get all 12 of these done within a year. Again, look to what Marvel vs. Capcom 3 did with Ultimate. But that single long season seems like a bad idea. Like, even Capcom seems smart enough to avoid that. And given the exact time frames on when they debut, which never actually occurred, I'd wager that this was just a clever ruse. At most, some leaked characters like Akuma and Loki were actually being worked on before Capcom pulled the plug, and OP made up the rest. But personally, wouldn't bet the farm on that. Okay, third time's a charm, and this one has the most concrete evidence of them all. The dev kit version. Yeah, if there's any rumor with the roster you know about, it's probably this. Infinite was intended to have 61 playable characters at launch. This comes from FChamp's livestream with the dev kit version. He highlights a section that he claims to show 61 character slots, with another segment for stages and another still for DLC. I'd play the audio, but because of how big the stream was, I had to mute it if I wanted to get it in anything above potato quality, and the original Twitch VOD has long since been lost. I'll link the original archive with a timestamp to this moment down below if you're interested. So, what makes this hard to believe? Well, he doesn't actually translate any of the Japanese, and someone over on Event Hubs pointed out that what he claims to be the character selection is actually the word movie, as in, the kind of term that Japanese games use when referring to FMVs. Given that there are just short of 50 battles in the story mode, 
This may refer to the cutscenes of story mode and not the characters. But okay, okay, let's take F Champ at face value. Maybe these are meant to refer to character endings before the idea got scrapped. If that's the case, what's more likely? The game originally intended to launch with 60 playable characters, or the game adding more character slots than the base roster, so that way they could future-proof it for updates. Sorry to take a lot of wind out of this one, but unless they originally intended to bring back everyone from Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 while dropping one of their 12 newcomers, which would otherwise account for 62 characters, not 61, I just don't think this was ever in the cards. However, if you want to hold the torch for this rumor, I have a little coincidence you might be interested in. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite has 36 characters, meaning it would need 24 characters to reach 60, and it's assumed that slot 61 would be for the fusion of Sigma and Ultron. And as it just so happens, the final and most credible rumor's magic number is 24. This final rumor is tied to the Reddit user Vergaben, who is known to leak several games. The RE2 remake, Soul Calibur 6, Devil May Cry 5, and DLC details for Dragon Ball Fighters, Injustice 2, and Street Fighter V Arcade Edition. He's not 100% accurate, but is right more often than not. The Reddit list, from a different user, compiles several characters he's been told from different sources. However, looking into this one a little further, PlayStation Lifestyles has an article citing six and a half characters he was sure Season 2 was going to use for the DLC, although he didn't know if the game would have any updates beyond that second season. All of the characters cited in the PlayStation Lifestyle article were part of the 24 in the combined list. So I'll quickly go over those who are claimed to have been considered but passed on. Kicking it off is Doctor Doom and Captain Commando, the only two characters to appear across all three leaks in this video that actually offered a roster. Doctor Doom makes sense. He's arguably the main villain of Marvel, when there's no cosmic nonsense going on at least. But Captain Commando? Would have never guessed it. Characters in previous leaks also include Daredevil, Wolverine, Psylocke, Magneto, Storm, Deadpool, and Akuma. Oh, and also Jean from God Hand, I almost forgot about that. As for the characters that we have not heard before in this video, the Marvel side sees Cyclops, which is fair, he was the face of the X-Men in the older Versus titles, and Green Goblin. He would definitely be an interesting Spider-Man rep, although I wonder how his jet board would work. Apollo Justice was mentioned, which is interesting given the previously mentioned rumor of Phoenix Wright being overhauled for this game. Using Apollo instead of Phoenix for that purpose just makes more sense to me. The list also includes Nina from Breath of Fire, although it doesn't clarify which one. It's not terribly important which one in the end, I guess. They're all Magic Staff users. But I would have expected some specifics. You see, Breath of Fire is like The Legend of Zelda, of where the two main characters, Ryu and Nina, are actually different versions of the character, depending on the game, and each game takes place years and years apart. But she's not the only one from that series, as Blue, aka Days, was also cited. Her appearance as a Naga is certainly striking, but she's also the only character who is actually the same character across every Breath of Fire game. If this is true, I'm pretty sure this would have been a one or the other situation. I doubt they were going to add both. The final option not present in the other leaks is Regina from Dino Crisis. If I had to guess, she would serve as a return to Jill Valentine's classic MVC2 moveset, just with dinosaurs instead of B.O.W.'s. It would have been a nice niche pick. As an aside, there's another character slot that would have gone to Capcom, but Vergaben claimed he didn't know anything about them. Rather if that means this was undisclosed beyond it being a Capcom rep, or if he was described the character but he couldn't identify who it was, is not made clear. Now, what makes this the most believable rumor is a single data mine. When the DLC for Infinite was coming out, someone data mined that there were 12 character slots added, not 6. So there was at least the option for another 6 characters, and PlayStation Lifestyle's version of Vergaben's leak cited 6 additional characters. So why do I say 6 and a half? Well, it's because they hadn't decided on the 6 character yet. So let's start there. The first choice they had for the final slot was Rashid from Street Fighter V. Given C Viper was selected to represent Street Fighter IV in MVC3, and Alex represented Third Strike back in Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, Rashid representing SFV just seems like a logical next step. He's also one of the more well received newcomers to the series and has a very distinct combat style, so he's a pretty easy choice. 
The other choice was Virgil from DMC. Devil May Cry was in the works around the time the DLC rumors were circulating, and given Virgil has a massive role in that game, it's possible that this was a battle of cross-promotion. Do they go for the DLC of Street Fighter V? Or the upcoming revival of Devil May Cry? Or maybe it's as simple as both of these characters are popular and I'm looking too deep into it. They were not, however, the only characters from their respective franchise on the 6 list. Street Fighter 3's final boss, Gil, once again makes an appearance. This has to be because he was intended for Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and they wanted to try again. Uh, to be fair, the reason that Gil was cut for Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is because the game was too fast for him, and it made him look really weird. So maybe they saw the slower gameplay of MVCI as a chance to make it happen. Devil May Cry's other representative was said to be Lady, who was a pretty popular request by that point. I know nothing about her character, but she has a rocket launcher and some spunk, so I know enough to be interested. I should really play Devil May Cry one of these days. Moving on to the Marvel side, we have Star-Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm surprised Gomorra got chosen over him in the base roster. Having another gun guy would be a lot more forgivable if one of them had jet boots. He's like Shadow the Hedgehog. With guns. Okay, bad analogy, but I still think he would have been more of a troll. It makes me wonder if Marvel mandated her since she wasn't going to survive Infinity War, and she wouldn't have been much of a draw for a season of DLC because, you know, she's dead. Speaking of mandates, the other Marvel character would be Miss Marvel. Yeah, Virga Ben's leak has four Capcom characters and two Marvel characters, evening out the roster. Now, I call Kamala Khan a potential mandate because, well, she's like Miles Morales where she has a fanbase, but is overly pushed by Marvel to the point of frustration. There's a lot of rumors as to why she's pushed as heavily as she is, but I'll spare you that for now. But let's just say she was not made the main character of that Avengers game because of her chemistry with the other Avengers. Combine that with her powers at the time being little more than just a more limited version of Mr. Fantastic, and you have a character that would have almost certainly been a Marvel push instead of a Capcom pick. What was certainly a Capcom pick is the final option, the cult classic character who hasn't seen anything since his single game, Asura, Asura, whatever, from His Wrath. My inability to decide how to pronounce his name aside, his inclusion would actually explain why Akuma's not in the roster, as between Professional Angry Dad over here and Gil finally joining the roster, the Great Demon of Street Fighter would be fairly redundant. So, according to the data miners, there are six unused DLC slots in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, and according to Vergaben, those six slots would have gone to Garfield, Little Mac, Todoroki, Isuka, Launch, and either Baki or Loki. Now, remember that the first six DLC characters that the game did get are all but confirmed to have been ready at launch, but Capcom higher-ups wanted to sell them as DLC. This would imply those same higher-ups pulled the plug before the DLC roster for Season 2 was finalized. My guess is that the DLC of those already finished fighters didn't sell too well, so they weren't interested in putting more funding for proper DLC, and instead shut down post-launch support in favor of projects they had faith in. I am not saying this is what happened, but if Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite was meant to have more DLC fighters, I'd hedge my bets on this being the outcome. Especially since Vergaben claimed no one knew if this game would continue getting support after the second season. Okay, so I lied. I have one last leak of sorts to share with you. The removal of the X-Men. Now, there's no list of any individual X-Men being planned out but cut. Rather, in the interview where Rosas and Evans, the two Capcom producers who infamously gave the excuse of characters just being functions, they also admit they intentionally cut out the X-Men because people wouldn't know who they are. Serious? They say, when you look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you think of Black Panther or some of the Guardians of the Galaxy. But people wouldn't be familiar with the X-Men since they aren't in it. Again, I'm not making this up. I'm putting the quotes on screen, and I'll link them down below. But these quotes do low-key reveal that the MCU and the story mode dictated the roster. Now, I'd like to remind you that with Marvel vs. Capcom 3, many interviews before the game's launch would claim that Capcom made the creative decisions on who to cut and it was only with the post-launch of Ultimate that we got interviews claiming that Marvel rejected certain choices. There is a very real chance that for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, that Marvel is riding high on the peak of the MCU and has way more say this time around, 
than Capcom in 2015 to 2016, but they want to keep their business relations professional. But it's not just Marvel that resulted in the roster being as weak as it was. It's worth mentioning that Capcom had a hand in it too. First, the story mode, which the devs openly say had to be taken into account on who gets to be playable. In fact, the story mode probably determined who got axed for DLC fodder in the base game. Capcom's higher-ups also decided to give this game a shoestring budget, which definitely would be a factor into how few characters they get and how little time they had to work. When it comes to how much games get funded and how much time they have to be developed, we have seen, between Resident Evil 3's remake, this, and most recently, Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster, there is a heavy discrepancy between their main efforts and will be generous and call them side projects. And sadly, the traits that affected the outcome of this game and its roster haven't gone away. Marvel, despite having gone from Kingpin to Pinhead at the box office, is every bit as controlling and petty as before. And with Fortnite now offering more widespread advertising than anything Capcom has to offer, getting them to play ball at all might be the hard part now. And on Capcom's side, while they have devs and customers itching for a Marvel vs. Capcom 4, are they willing to actually fund one? Especially with them moving as many productions over to their Resident Evil engine as possible, it means that a lot of work for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite probably wouldn't carry over, and that's ignoring the possibility that they would not want to risk competing with Street Fighter these days. Hell, there's a conspiracy that that's why this game was so limited in the first place, so Street Fighter V wouldn't look bad by comparison. <sighs> I don't know what hurts more. That Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite might be the last true Marvel vs. Capcom game, or that this game's mediocre roster might actually be the best case scenario for this game.